in, but like, hello. I'm not going to start. And I said <laughs> eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. I remember yeah. when people used to say like, yeah, I'm not going to really start worrying about like going to the gym and working out until I hit 30. It's like, man, that, that I have a good gonna, friend. Like, I'm going to call him Ryan Rushwood. <laughs> who was very stressed sure. about turning 40. And I was just like, and, Cry and me a river confiding in me and we were talking about it i was like you you know that was like six years ago for me <laughs> back when we were talking about it yeah but i also remember being in my i don't know in college right and being like that guy's old he's like 30. yeah you know, yeah, like you totally. say these things yep. yeah you get yeah. to that age and oh, then yeah. you're like what in the heck i'm that guy yeah but like it's also like you're still young like you Are don't we actually Oh yes, yeah. I was I was um, always the youngest in everything. I was the youngest to graduate. I was youngest at different jobs, and then now I'm like the oldest on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, no, I graduated <laughs> high school at seventeen. Yeah, same here. Like so, I, st- I started yeah. my senior year at sixteen, and um, yeah, and then you're like, like I just late, became you're a late. You're a December. I'm you're November. You're November. Uh, I'm October. I'm, I'm October too. December yeah. boy. So. It's kind of weird because now I'm just the old guy. I'm June. I actually don't belong on this show. I just realized. I, I went to high no. school entirely in the 80s. I was born in the summer. Yeah, Gramps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't graduate at 17 like the other cool kids. Yeah, you're not Go cool climb aboard better. your Volkswagen <laughs> minibus and head back back into the 60s. <laughs> Technically, you were born in the 60s, right? Technically, yeah. yeah. Yes. What do you mean technically? You either well, were because or not. The decade starts with the first year. Okay. Like, you don't, like year zero doesn't count, right? So it's one, two, three. Oh, and okay. so the 10th year is technically the last year in a decade. So 1970 would be the last year of the 60s. Even though Got nobody it. in practice, that's not true. That's yeah. just only numerically true. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. I think almost across the board, if you were like, you know, I was born in the 60s. In 1970, people would be like, people would be like mm-hmm. what? well, this was the big thing when the millennium happened. People were like, it actually, the 21st century doesn't begin until next year. And everybody's like, great. You have a fun yeah. party next year then. Right. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're partying now. Right now. Yeah, yeah, Prince told us a party now. So we're just, we're Yeah, exactly. Now. I still have that shirt from Tech TV or ZDTV. Party Are you guys ready? Uh, yeah. Yes. I, okay. It is news time on Point to Point. We'll figure that out later. Here we go. Uh, three, two. Do you enjoy hearing the tech news delivered by smart, informed people? Me too. Learn more about how you can support this show at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, April 24th, 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. Also in Los Angeles at Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And also in Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. Are you in Los Angeles, producer Roger Chang? I am in Los Angeles adjacent. You're in the county. Yes. So sure. All right. So the county folks. We are inside the bubble. We're inside the freeway bubble here. We're and gonna we acknowledge have, that. Solidarity, everybody. And we have the best LA weather county. ever. The key to seeing outside the bubble is acknowledging that it's there. <laughs> That's how you escape it, too, right? That's right. Right. Uh, let's start with a few tech things you should know. Amazon announced a new service that'll let the couriers deliver Amazon Prime orders to the trunk of certain cars in 37 cities in the U.S. to Prime members. I know what you're thinking. And we're going to talk about a lot of those things that you're thinking a little bit later in the show. Yes, God, we are. Uh, it's, <laughs> Instagram is rolling out a new data download tool to users accessible through the app's privacy settings, thank God, uh, to let users export their photos, videos, stories, profile, info, comments, and messages. The new tool allows Instagram to comply with the data portability rule in European Union's GDPR privacy law that goes into effect May 25th. Now, Instagram users can also upload multiple photos and videos at once. WhatsApp announced is also adding a data download tool. U.S. Supreme Court ruled 7-2 to two Tuesday that the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office's review procedure called inter partes is constitutional. This is the review that Congress made possible that allows the USPTO to reconsider a patent grant without making the parties spend the money fighting it out in federal court. 
The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission said Tuesday that Altaba, you might recall, that's the part of Yahoo that Verizon did not buy, has agreed to pay $35 million to settle charges that Yahoo did not disclose its December 24 data breach to investors. All right, we got a couple of companies that are scrambling to show you that they are working hard to get bad stuff off their platform. Who's the first one, Lamar? Yeah, the first one is uh, good old YouTube. So YouTube issued its first quarterly moderation report saying it removed 8.3 million videos between October and December last year for violating community guidelines. Now, 6.7 million of them were flagged for review by machine and 76 of those were removed before getting any views. So, um, you know, been on YouTube almost 10 years myself. You're on YouTube as well. Matter of fact, we're on YouTube right now. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I, I have to say, uh, I like the transparency. YouTube and Google have always been mysterious about what their policies were for removing the, the guidelines. We never we never had a report like this. So I, for one, just as a person who is on here every day, it's glad to see, you know, that, hey, they're, they're, they're doing something. But then here's why they're doing it. You know, here's why they're removing. Um, I, I've had, never had a video removed, but I, in the last month, I've had two that were like sent to manual review. And I asked my YouTube rep, what's, what's you know, I'm, I'm pretty family friendly. What's manual review? And it's like, oh, they, it's people who are periodically just picking videos to, to just make sure right. that, that <laughs> everything's good. It's the TSA. Hey, yeah, yeah. the random search thing. Hey, it's kind of hey, interesting hey, buddy, too. Come over here. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of interesting, too, that 76% of these videos were removed by machine before getting posted. Yeah. So that whole, like, your video is processing makes a little bit more sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what YouTube's trying to say here is, sure, it's easy to look at the millions and millions of views uh, or videos on, on YouTube, find the one we missed, and say YouTube isn't doing enough. We're trying to show that we're making our best effort. There's a lot of videos out there. You can decide whether that's good enough, but these are good numbers to look at and say like, all right, so they are catching millions of videos that shouldn't be up there. Uh, you can then take that into account when you decide if you think they're doing well enough or not. Yeah. Uh, I th they constantly demonetize YouTube videos for DTNS, which we then have to send a manual review, which then get remonetized, except once. And that was the time that we discussed the shooting at the YouTube campus. Now. That might really? be a legitimate reason to demonetize because very often on newscasts, if they're covering a tragedy or a disaster, they don't run commercials, partly because they don't want to look crass like they're monetizing a tragedy, but also right. sometimes advertisers are like, yeah, I don't want to be around that. I don't want to be around that coverage. So Absolutely. it's that aspect yeah. of it too. Well, speaking of community standards, Facebook released an updated version of its community standards guidelines to users so they can better understand how content moderators handle objectionable material. Here's an example. The definition of harassment Facebook now says means users can't send a message that calls for death, serious disease or disability or physical harm or claims that a victim of a violent tragedy might be lying about being a victim. This is not something that Facebook disclosed before that its actual human moderators were looking at. Users previously could only request an appeal if their Facebook profile page or group was taken down altogether. Now that's changed. They can challenge the removal of individual posts of content. Users can also now appeal Facebook's decision to preserve content that a user reports as a violation of the company's rules. So th this is interesting, Sarah. So they're, they're saying that Okay, so if I, let's say I was friend, Facebook friends with you, and I said, uh, and just excuse this, because uh, I would never say this. I say, I hope you die. What, what, will that never get to you with, with this? Uh, and, and it, it, well, this like, is messages posted on Facebook. I oh, don't know that oh, this is not messenger. messenger. Uh, okay, that was the confusion I was having. Yeah, that, uh, that is confusing for people. But I, you know, that said, all of this has the same problem, which is, well, what about actual jokes? What about a situation where there was a victim who was taking advantage of a violent tragedy to pretend uh, and, and get something out of it? Not the opposite, which we've seen recently where people were trying to say that actual victims weren't. You know, who draws the line? And so part of this very complex process is Facebook saying, here's the guidelines we use. Right. But the other part of it is how are they actually executed the, of the 10,000 people that Facebook now employs to do this? Where do they draw these lines? It's good to know where they're supposed to be drawing the lines, but you know, you also have to watch this side of it. It's a huge nightmare for Facebook because no matter which way they lean, 
there's going to be a side that says you are suppressing our speech. Yeah, because if you, I just put this in in the um, in, in the IRC chat, like who uh, who determines what's funny? Like you know, yeah. like 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 if you if you're making a joke and just you know just it's funny to you, it might not be funny to others or vice versa. So you know, he, humor is always subjective like that. So or, it's going to run into problems with that. somebody saying something insulting on purpose and then trying to say, "Oh, yeah, I was just joking," to get out of it, right? right. To avoid whatever. Well, yeah, uh, and it's this- important that Facebook, you know, they're not saying, "Hey, we've changed," the, you know, what we define as harassment. They're just saying, "Here's what we're going to look at, and you should know this." And yeah. we're going to make this publicly available so that everybody has more information. No, that's a really good point. They're not changing their policy. They're not saying we're doing anything different. They're saying this is what it is. This is what the people who've been moderating Facebook recently okay. have been working off of. Mm-hmm. Catherine Temkin and her team at ReSwitched published an exploit chain co- that they're calling Fuse Gele. Uh, it's an mm, exploit. Sounds of like the, ice cream. I know, right? It's a, <laughs> a delicious exploit for the NVIDIA Tegra <laughs> X1 based mm. system. Uh, the most famous NVIDIA Tegra X1 based system is the Nintendo Switch. Now, an improperly coded USB control procedure in the Tegra can allow for circumvention of lockout operations that protect the boot ROM during USB recovery mode. The method requires shorting out a pin on the right Joy Con connector. This is not an easy thing for everyone to take advantage of. Uh, it's not terribly sophisticated if you know what you're doing, though. Uh, There's a couple of ways to do that short out. And it takes advantage of the fact that you want your boot ROM to be unchangeable. So they don't change the boot ROM. They just are able to run arbitrary code because they can circumvent the lockout. And it's not going to be able to be patched because the boot ROM is designed not to be modifiable. They can't go into the boot ROM and change the flaw now because they protected the boot ROM from being changed, which you want to do. And this exploit got around it. Now, the exploit is probably going to be used almost entirely for running unauthorized code. So yes, it could be used for game piracy. It could also be used for homebrew stuff uh, and people cracking the switch to, to do cool things with it, as well as illegal things. There's also the likelihood of somebody doing something bad, which is why Tempkin and her team made this public. And there are a few other teams have now come forward and say, yeah, we actually found the same vulnerability. We weren't at the end of our 90 days yet, so we hadn't made it public yet. But now that she has, we're going to make our findings mm-hmm. public as well. Yeah, I, I was reading that this uh, really terrifies uh, a Nintendo. And it's one of the reasons they they haven't uh, done any kind of, uh, you know, save your game to the cloud or, or save your game, you know, to... Uh, SD card. You know, they're very archaic when it when it comes to to their segment things because they're and legit terrified about this kind of scenario. And now they have this kind of scenario. So you know, do do they just say, "Hey, let's just give everybody this"? As a Nintendo user, that's what I'm wondering. You just gonna say, "Hey, let's just do the services that PlayStation and Xbox does and hope for the best," or or do you know do they panic with you know with this and make it even harder for us to? to do basic things on the Switch. Yeah, and Ebarch points out that there are ways to do signed boot ROMs that, that you can change them. So I, I'm, I'd be real curious if there's absolutely no way to do this. It may just be costly uh, to update it. Uh, and honestly, it, it may not be worth updating. Um, but it's, it's certainly not an easy patch like some vulnerabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so Spotify announced a new free version of its mobile app, which now recommends music to users on the fly. Uh, previously, the free limit, free tier limited users to shuffle. Now, with the new version, users can listen on demand to whatever song they want as many times as they want, as long as those songs appear on one of the 15 personalized discovery playlists like Daily Mix, Discover Weekly, uh, Release Radar, or Today's Top Hits. So, I, I mean, yeah, I know think? people love Spotify Discover Weekly. That's like a beloved playlist. I am not a Spotify user. I was not aware that on the free tier, which I know is going to have to be limited in, you know, in some sense because Apple Music, which I pay for, is 10 bucks a month. Uh, I didn't I was not aware that you couldn't listen to a specific song as many times as you wanted. Yeah. I wasn't you aware can that make either. a playlist, but you can only listen to it on shuffle. So you can't control which songs come up. And like a Pandora type. It's a little bit more thing. of a Pandora thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and with a tiny bit more control, now what they're saying is, all right, if we put the song on a playlist, because we're going to pretend we're radio, then you can play it as many times as you want. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yep. British trip hop act massive attack. We were talking earlier about feeling old. 
Buckle up, everybody. This was in the pre-show. Uh, is celebrating the 20th anniversary of their album, Mezzanine. And that makes me feel old. By having it preserved in DNA. It's really cool. The medium will actually have an estimated lifespan of hundreds to thousands of years versus decades expected from CDs. Scientists at the Functional Materials Laboratory at ETH Zurich University will do the encoding. Opus Music Compression will get the album down to 15 megabytes, which will then be split into 920,000 fragments, each encoded in a DNA strand that will be stored in 5,000 nanometer scale glass beads. Uh, appropriate name uh, be a massive attack on someone's system to have this music. That's all I had. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it was. It's, it's not funny. I try it. It's, I mean, the the fact that they're doing this is <laughs> incredible. I, I've never heard of such a thing. It's really cool. I also happen to. I had this album. I listened oh, to it really? a lot a long time ago. Did you have it on glass I, beads, though? I, I didn't. No, I, yeah, had, so it now you get the I had it on CD, and I haven't yeah. seen that CD in a while. I think I probably sold it back to Amoeba <laughs> Music at probably some point. But maybe it wouldn't even you know, be alive anymore because it's you know, 20 years old. So. Oh, I love Amoeba. Hmm. Yeah, I know. But but yeah, it's it's this is... Uh, I don't... I, you know, it's kind of gimmicky, right? But it's pretty cool that you can just achieve this. It's gimmicky for science, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not right. like gimmicky in like, hey, let's let's sell a bunch of glass bead versions of our 20 year old album. Like, well, that's it's also not, not gimmicky in the sense that this is actually going to preserve, you know, a piece of media for potentially thousands of years. Well, it will. But that's what I mean. That's yeah. not the gimmick. No, I mean, the gim the gimmick is 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 for the people who are developing DNA as a preservation storage system to say. Well, okay, we could store our paper that describes how to do this, but nobody's going to care about that. Let's get Massive Attack on board, and then people will know about the technology that we're developing uh, and, and the ability to store in DNA. Um, so, so if I understand it right, what they're doing is instead of zeros and ones, which is what you would put in a digital file on a CD, right. they're using you know G A B H uh, the, the the parts of the DNA to encode the information, and then they freeze those strands in glass so that they don't break down but they're um, able to be read trans through the transparent glass so I, I want my videos to be preserved like this on google checkout one day you know or the takeout where you know a thousand years from now people can say wow that guy it, they weren't ready for him that he, he oh, was a you, you know cg not gaba i said gaba because oh, i was thinking proteins for some reason okay now i'm hungry all right <laughs> <laughs> also, like, protein make you hungry? also yes, thousands does. of years from now, are there going to be any humans? Well, there won't be if we are not able to store information <laughs> long enough to recover from the inevitable apocalypse. Exactly. Not saying there aren't going to be, but are there going to be? Well, um, just in case. Yeah, hard to know. We'll be able to watch. Maybe listen the dinosaurs will come back and, and yeah. listen to it. <laughs> Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, subscribe to Daily Tech Headlines on the Amazon Echo, the Google Home, the Anchor app, and, of course, at DailyTechHeadlines.com. So Amazon announced a new service. We mentioned it at the top of the show, giving couriers access to your car in partnership with General Motors and Volvo, rolling out to 37 cities for Amazon Prime members mm. who, so you have to be in the city, you have to be an Amazon Prime member, and you have to own a GM or a Volvo. That is model year 2015 or newer with an active OnStar or Volvo on call account. Now, sources tell The Verge that Amazon signed a two year contract with both GM and Volvo. The company says it plans to add other brands over time. But GM and Volvo are kind of advanced in this notion of we have access to your car in case of emergency or if you lose your keys. Yep. So they, Amazon can tap into this securely. Amazon doesn't have to know anything about the cars, you just associate your OnStar or your Volvo uh, account with the Amazon key app. And then the Amazon delivery person says, okay, I'm at the car. I'm supposed to deliver the package to you. let me in GM and Volvo take on the responsibility of making sure, okay, that really is an Amazon delivery person. This person did order this. They have associated their account. Great. We'll unlock the car. And they make sure that that trunk is closed or that door to the pickup is closed and locked before they released the delivery person to be able to make their next delivery. It still sounds, when I read this early this morning, it still sounds like an April Fool's joke. 
Like, and did you watch the video that, that they had? Like, like it's it was so cheesy and so way too upbeat about these people being so happy. Well, what are they, they gonna do? Be like, like, I don't make know. It seem shady I, I, I know, and weird. It, it like, was like overly happy, and it just seemed like this is April Fool. They should have le- released it on April Fools, and then and then the second the next day we're like, hey guys, that was actually real. I, I would have bought that a little bit better. See, but if it, if it hadn't been portrait videos, you wouldn't have believed it. You're like, these aren't real beta testers. <laughs> I mean, there are some limitations because my first reaction was like, holy crap, I have so much junk in my trunk. And that I mean that literally <laughs> in my car trunk. I'm just curious what you'll be doing with that. Well, I'm going to get rid that. of it. it. Well, first of all, I don't have clean, a GM or a Volvo ticket to Salvation Army. vehicle. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I there, there are a lot of things in my trunk that would make putting a package in my trunk uh, difficult. That said, packages that weigh over 50 pounds are, you know, a certain size. If you they require a signature or if they're from a third party seller, mm. which a lot of Amazon packages are are not eligible at this time. So this is a limited rollout for Prime members. Yeah, th- there was a, a person I saw on Twitter that was like, hey, I'm a third party, uh, before they said it was third party, so they didn't read the article. And he's like, I'm a third party seller and I, I sell makeup. I don't want that going to a hot car. Can I Can I get, you know, opt out of this? And, and and so that you know that's one of the answers right there. And they will have to tackle some of those things. What what what's your groceries if you did Amazon Fresh? Would that go? Oh yeah, no, Amazon Fresh is going to be part of this. You're right. That's right, a yeah. good point. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't there's want my all, ice cream sitting the, in the back of my F one fifty melting. I've got a, a friend who's got a car parked, and I have like a tandem spot. I've got two spots, you know, technically. But I know all my neighbors, and there's a friend of mine who's parking his car in there right now. And, you know, he said to me the other day, one of your neighbors stopped me and asked me what I was doing there and the whole thing. You know, it's like neighborhood watch, right? You know, we're all looking out for each other. Hey, I don't know you. What are you doing there? Mm -hmm. And you can only imagine what, you know, somebody in someone's trunk who, like, doesn't really seem like they're supposed to be there or aren't recognized, even if they're wearing the right stuff is going to confuse people. And a lot of them are Amazon logistics, so they're not wearing the right stuff. They're wearing regular clothes. Uh-huh. Uh, so you imagine a car, a shady in looking an car, unmarked van, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, just, yeah, or their own car because a lot of people use their own cars and pull yeah. up and opening your trunk. I mean, it just looks uh, somebody can get hurt. So like they, they they may have to have some kind of you know a uniform or something on. Just that's to, the kind of thing that that does go away as people get used to it. Like oh, that's mm-hmm. a delivery person. But you're right. You know there there'll be misunderstandings. Well, but then when everyone gets thing, used yet. to it, and then you figure out how to spoof the outfit. Then you got robbers running amok. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody, I, I know Stoic Squirrel said it and and he just said it for everybody else, which is, you know, people break into cars, right? Yeah. I don't like to open my trunk in a public parking lot and put things in it. I'm because, the same way. You know, I'm worried somebody's going to see like, oh, he put some cool stuff in there. Let's go, you know, let's see what, right, see what right. it was. It's also uh, not like super easy to get into someone's trunk. I mean, if well, you're going to do it, you're going to do it. But exactly. it's not like someone's like, Ooh. <laughs> and the chances are low as paranoid as I may be about it. The chances are low and they're still lower than someone leaving a package outside your door <laughs> that anyone could just walk up and take totally. versus having to break into a trunk. So, 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 what, so what do you think of this versus the, Hey, I'm going to open your house and, and leave that. That's part of key, Amazon key as well. Right. Is I don't that, want anybody in my house. In my in the trunk of my car, sorry, it's messy, but like that, yeah, I could deal with that. Mm-hmm. You know, if I eventually had a car model where I could take advantage of this, sure, I I would. Yeah. In my house, no. I would I don't, rather, I don't like that idea at all. I would rather them, and they're doing a good job of it. And, and if you're in a like major city, but I would rather them push more of the Amazon lockers. You know, they have some of them at Seven Elevens and things, and uh, I I would like to see roll out of more of those. Uh, versus the, this idea, you know, because I have a UPS store, so I could throw my stuff there. But you know, they're they're kind of expensive. So, oh, I mean, there's a Whole Foods near me that I go to all the time anyway, and they have Amazon lockers, and lots oh. of people use them. It's super convenient because I'm I know I'm going there at least once a week. Yeah, and it's not an either or. Uh, if you right. feel more comfortable using the locker, they're still they still have the lockers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is just right. hey, if the lockers aren't convenient for you, and you have a car, and you've thought to yourself, wow, I wish they could just leave it in the car, then here you go. I'm curious how many of those people there are. I am too. Because yeah, if I'm do. at work, <laughs> like one, so one of the ways this works is they geofence it where your car is, right? They're able to track it through OnStar, for instance, or Volvo. Uh, and they say, look, it has to be within a certain radius of one of your Amazon delivery addresses. And most people have home and work, right? As their mm-hmm. Amazon delivery addresses. Yep. So it has to be home or work. 
I could see where like, oh, I left the car at home. I feel better about you putting it in the trunk of the car than leaving it on my porch. You see that scenario. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine at work that I'd feel better with it being in the parking lot of my work versus in a versus, you know, at the front desk or with the mail room or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. And then and then what do you do for uh, apartment buildings that have a parking lot (laughs) trying to trying to find the car? You know, that, that, that that could be pretty crazy, too. I mean, Sarah, I could see this working for you sometimes if you haven't taken your car and maybe you're out because because you, you you know, you, you've you had problem with packages making it to you because you're not there to sign for them. So maybe maybe that's better. I don't know. But you you can't have a package that has to be signed for in this oh, uh, right. program either. So yeah, it man. doesn't really fix the yeah, problem that, that I problem personally all, have. It? Yeah. No, it doesn't. All right. However, you know, beginning stages. I, I don't know. I, I appreciate it's a start. It. It's they're, you know, they're thinking outside the trunk or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't mean to, you know, condemn Amazon for trying something new. No. Uh, this, no, no. this is interesting and, and it might work great for certain people in certain circumstances. Sure. Yeah. yeah you got to start somewhere. I mean, if this is something that owners of, you know, the, the cars that fit into the model that are also Prime subscribers are like, this is awesome. You know, like it just changes everything. We love this. Yeah, and, there, you know, right. you'll see a way to roll out. Yeah, there I'm are people who love the 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 in home one. I, I've seen people like, oh yeah, I, I love. The, you know, they don't have pets and things they're going to run out. So I don't know anybody fit. who's using it yet. I'd love I'd love to to talk to somebody about that. Yeah. I keep my car car in my garage. I know that I'm unusual in that respect, <laughs> but well, yeah, we, no, we don't I mean, fill our garage with other things. We put a car in it. Yeah. My mom parks her car in so her garage. Not, it's not that I, weird. I'm not going to let them in my garage. I guess if I had, if I was going to let them in my garage, I'd just let them in the house, right? At that point, why not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, well all right. I mean, I don't know. I guess there's fewer things in the garage, but right. still. Hey, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and tell us what you would do as far as this Amazon delivery, uh, either there or at facebook.com slash group slash daily tech news show. What is the mail today? Chip from Boston. Uh, <laughs> that, ever. <laughs> that was very robotic of you. Uh, <laughs> like an Amazon robot. I see what you're doing. Uh, Chip from Boston, who says he works at a TV station, says, I was watching TV Sunday night. I have to watch this stuff. I noticed an ad for Snapchat during primetime on ABC, during America's Funniest Home Videos, and then again during American Idol. I was wondering, what do you guys think about this whole new media company running ads on old media? Is this a ploy to pull in older users? Now, for, you know, my first reaction was like, well, I mean, think about all the YouTube TV ads that we saw during the Super Bowl. But then I, when I thought of America's Funniest Home Videos, I don't know offhand what the demo for that is, but I assume it skews older. It's older. You know, it's like, thinking, yeah, what what is the point of a snap ad during that that time slot on ABC? Yeah, I mean, I American know. Idol seems core, right? They're just yeah, that's yeah. that's a bunch of bunch of folks who are using snap, probably watching that in an aspirational way. I'm going to be on American Idol. American Idol runs things on snap. So that makes sense. But America's Funniest Home Videos, I'm like, was maybe it was just run of sight. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 showed up. I, don't I know. think I think ploy and, and no, no offense to the person, I think the, pl- the word ploy is, sounds a little negative. I I, I, I think uh, any I mean, there's so many people that the, the TV viewing audience who still is really not on Internet and on apps are is astronomically huge. I mean, it's there's no parody of that yet. So, uh, yeah, Snapchat needs Snapchat needs new fresh blood. I wrote back to Chip and and I I said, look, uh, I think it's more significant that it's Snap doing it. Not that it's new media. I've seen Twitter ads on TV. I've seen Facebook ads on TV. Mm -hmm. It's that Snap has gotten to the point where they're like, "Mm, worth worth spending some TV money to try to build an audience. Well, and I think that it points to, sure, you know, if you're trying to build your older audience... How are you going to get those people? You know, oh where where are, where are those people spending time? You know, oh, are you bottoming out kind of in, you know, the the younger realm? Beef in our chat room points that out. Of course, you can upload clips through Snapchat for America's Funniest Home Videos. Oh, okay. There it makes, is. Makes perfect sense. Even there if the demo is a little off. Uh, okay. 
See, I haven't watched that show in a really long yeah, time. Yeah, so they want to be part of the show. Uh, so, well, so perfect, see, perfect there you go. Okay. It's integration that we just didn't even get. Chip, you should know better. You work at a TV station. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's America's funniest videos, according to Beef. Not home videos anymore. Oh, because, yeah, right. It's like the mm -hmm. idea of home video is antiquated, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Like, Keep I, honest, you're babe. not at home. You're out and about. Got another email real quick from Dave uh, who said, thinking of Amazon home robots and what they would be best for, surely picking up dog poo would be the killer app here. Oh, man, Dave, you're, you're speaking to the choir there. Yeah. If that if that thing can roll on on <laughs> uneven ground, that's coming out with me morning and night with the dogs like well, yeah that's also i mean that, yeah assuming that your dog is not doing that his or her business in the house that's a whole other thing oh gosh no no i'm just talking about i go out in the morning with the dogs in the backyard i go out in the evening with the dogs in the backyard and they do their business a robot picking it up would be great yeah, yeah. nobody wants to do that like yeah. that probably no one in the whole world is like no i like it I enjoy that. <laughs> really? It. It's one of my favorite things. They can clean my cat's litter box. I will buy one for I, any amount of money. I used to have a neighbor who would come out and talk to me. Uh, she was great. I loved her. But she would come out and talk to me and be like, how's it going? I'm like, I'm picking up dog poop. How do you think it's going? <laughs> Uh, Sarah, you've got to get a litter robot, by the way. I'll tell you about them after the show. They're, oh, please do. Yeah, great. Yes. Please do. Uh, yeah. Uh, th thank you. Um, I can't wait. Um, also, thank you for being on the show in general. Um, it's great to have you on the show more regularly. Lamar Wilson, tell folks where they can keep up with everything else that you do. Yeah, so uh, I'm at Lamar Wilson pretty much everywhere. Uh, I, I do YouTube videos, unboxing, uh, and showcasing cool products, mostly in the, in the uh, gaming realm. This week, we'll be doing some Lego uh, and kind of geek halls uh, uh, unboxing. We I unboxed a Nintendo Labo, and that was the thing that I did. I'll just say that it it <laughs> it, 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 is, it is a product that exists. That <laughs> did you build opinion. anything with it yet? <laughs> no, I well, I built I built this the the controller holder and what? oh yeah the demo thing. Right. That was the that was yeah that was my limit. I was like I, I looked at all that cardboard. I'm like I'm not doing all this. Somebody, somebody took someone nine hours on a well, live stream. Tom said just last week that it was so easy. It was well, super easy. The perforations are. <laughs> well, see, well, Tom is from a different breed. You know, back in the eighties. Uh, well, you know, he's a, yeah, he's an old gentleman. He watches America's Funniest Home Videos. He had to fold cardboard for all his toys when he was a child. <laughs> exactly. For Ten miles in the snow. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, thanks everybody for supporting us on Patreon. Uh, our goal every month is to get at least one more patron than last month. Uh, and the more we get, the crazier we feel. And uh, we're going to do something at the end of this month to celebrate. So right now, I think we're about nine Past couple of days, we've been nine more patrons than last month, but let's see how high we can get that. That's awesome. At patreon.com slash DTNS. Also, uh, new stuff coming to the store, dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. So keep that uh, in your head, and we'll let you know when the new stuff is there. Really excited for the new stuff. You guys are going to like it too. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. We'd love for you to join us live if you can. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Chris Mancini from Comedy Film Nerds. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> so Amazon keys your car or, or <laughs> junk in your trunk are, are the things they ha they have to be. <laughs> I honestly have a junk in my car's trunk. No, the number Mostly one is uh, Amazon's junk whoa, in your whoa. trunk. Just lean back. Lean back. <laughs> Real loud. Lean, lean back. back. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't understand. I'm literally at the same spot. Yeah. Now you sound fine. I also, I hear a uh. tiny hiss. Is it just me? <laughs> well, now yeah, I hear a lot more. Yeah, that, no, just yeah. in general, it's something that I don't normally hear. Nobody yeah. else hear that, hears that? Actually, yeah. I, I actually do hear that now. Yeah. It's not like really, I don't know. Let me, let me, let me, let me mute my mic, see if you hear it now. I do. So it's not me. Yeah. It's calming. Yeah. No, I like it. It doesn't uh, bother me, me. It's just me something myself. that I... Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 you. It's, it's you. It's oh, you. okay.
Yeah, it's just ambient noise from Roger then. Yeah. yeah. Roger's just got mic issues. That's why, that's why you it's need to be in the, LA. It's because of the roofers. I was going to say, Roger has a whole new roof <laughs> being put above him right now. It's no, no surprise. It's a something. wonder he's on the show at all with all yeah. that racket. Uh, Roger, you were trying to say something about the title of the show, I think. I think it was Amazon's Junk in Your Trunk was at the top. <laughs> I mean, the, it's that's a great one. I, that's a great pretty one. good. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want prime junk in your trunk. Uh, no, the, the other one's good. No, no. Nobody knows what prime junk is. <laughs> yeah, we this, What's just prime under, junk. Just understand you, you're going to get a whole different audience with that title. Just be prepared. <laughs> About time we expanded. They're going to be real disappointed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're branching out. We're going to, you know, start advertising on ABC. Just you wait. On America's funniest Sunday digital night. videos. I mean, D- DTNS after dark. Isn't that funny that, first of all, that Bob Saget is no longer part of it because, you know, he was a delightfully bad part of it. The fact that it's not called America's funniest home videos anymore. Right. And the fact that it's on. <laughs> right. The most yeah. confounding hey. part. Because yeah. I thought, I remember well, thinking in the mid 2000s. Watching YouTube saying, well, this is the end of America's Funniest Home Videos, right? Mm Because everybody can just watch whatever, all the funny cat videos they want all day long. But apparently not. Yeah. It's curated. It's It's curated curated content. In fact, it was YouTube before YouTube. Well, that was my point. Yeah. And that when (laughs) YouTube came along, you wouldn't need it anymore. But it turns out you do. Mm -hmm. So, so Sarah, uh, you've you've never seen the the Little Robot? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, it well... I'll, I'll try to get a link. Just just type in litter robot. Like so, I I've had a cat years ago, and it's this round uh, litter box, and you know you put the litter in there. Cat goes in, does his business, walks out, and then in about what five to seven minutes after it's kind of clumped up, it, it automatically uh, spins, and okay. then the, the it gets filters out the litter. The the stuff clumps and goes to the bottom bin, and then it just it it resets, and the litter is nice and fresh. And it, um, like, so it's not a robot. It's a well, it's, well, a, it's an electronic litter. Yeah, and you and you, and you and you clean it like I like kind of clean. assumed that it was like a robot. Oh no no no! And then you yeah. take out the bottom thing. Maybe depending on how many cats you have, maybe once or twice a week, and it's already in the bag. And then you just like it's the e- like easiest it's, thing. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, for, I, for, I, a tech, for a tech person, yeah, like you know, it, they have healthy. I don't know. Uh, Do you have space system? to put that? Uh, the litter you, box? You definitely oh, look at the size it. of that thing. You definitely I mean, need look, space this for poor it. family well, is been, looking. Okay, they're, they're literally okay, been, okay, they're cramming on that one couch. That, I oh, that, yeah. Look, yeah. <laughs> we had to sell our normal-sized couch <laughs> to make room for this. That's but you weird. guys, look how happy that family is. She's not their, happy. Their she's robot. in pain because it's such a small she's couch. She's, look she's at that anguish. She has no room on the couch. She's crying. I'm being crushed by the cat. Yeah, it's like when you get tickled and you're like, our own I'm not cow. laughing because I'm having fun. Uh, you know, that could, my litter box is currently sort of like in a closet. I don't know. I'd yeah, have you to have, find you, out. You, 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 have to plug this, you have to plug this up. But I, I tell you, it's, it's oh, amazing. You don't, have to, you, don't have to touch, you don't have to touch anything. Yeah. Hmm. Dude, you know what? Sam and Lucy would love this. Yeah, I actually am not sure that's true, but I would love this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, if they I might ever be like a cats again, it's it's number one what I what I'm gonna get for sure. Well, okay, I you should know, figure out the dimensions. When you have a fish tank, you don't need to change the litter box. Ah, uh, yeah. True, true, true. Wait, <laughs> I think <laughs> my other <laughs> yours did, Lamar. <laughs> like, yeah, well, the cat's going in the fish tank is yeah, really exactly what I was thinking. I was like, wait, wait, where is he going with that? And then I realized what Roger was saying is you have fish. Yeah. You know, okay. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Instead fish, of cats. Fish are boring. That's yes. The white squirrel. I've got a fish friend. are lame. Fish are lame. Oh yeah. man, I haven't thought about that in a while. Either. I have a friend who has a rather large <laughs> fish tank, and she I don't remember the kind of fish that is like the, you know, like sort of like the, you know, the, I don't know, the mean fish, but she'll buy fish because she knows that the mean fish will eat the other fish. And it's not even really like for food. It's like a predatory thing. And I'm like, I cannot imagine 
that just being like something that happens in your living room as you're like casually trying to wind you know down what? after if, a long day. If you if you want to play it being like a little uh, uh, Roman dictator and you have your gladiatorial games, you can have it with the fish. So stressful. I would never. And you I would know never. what? Do you that. get a little uh, digital music player attached to some sp- or a smart speaker and have it play the fight sequence music from the original Star Trek. Uh, dun, 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 and the fish are tagging. But it's like, oh, those poor little fish. You know, they're just being plopped into their death. And then there was. And you watch one. it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, there's, something I, I, there's something up with that, man. I want to put some salmon in my uh, air fryer tonight now. Hmm. <laughs> I made salmon <laughs> last night. Oh, did you? Do you have an air fryer? No. Oh, I, I air fry everything. I like. I need to do. A, we need to do a whole show on air fryers because I am okay. probably the biggest male fan of this. Like, I'm, I'm part of a Facebook group. It's all women. It's it's hilarious, but they love that I'm there. <laughs> they, they, that Wait, I'm talking so about air fryers. This is like a thing that women should know about, and I don't. What's an air fryer? Uh, well, it's if it's, it's stereotypical. If you like, the women should be cooking. Like anybody could. It, it, anybody could. But have what one. is it? So what it's like a fryer? convection type of, of oven. So it's it's, oh, okay. it's so, you, so you put it, it's air that's circulating. My father-in-law has one, by the way. Just yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I, yeah. I, it's not it's not for women, right? Uh, but in the in the Facebook group, that's just all that that's there. It just happens to be. Yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And so who, who they, like like, they're like they're like oh a guy's here. Wait, how oh. many people are in this Facebook group? Oh, thousands. Thousands. Multiple thousands. Wow. Yeah. Well, See, I, I, I make you know, I, I, make I fry a lot of stuff, but just like I'm all cast iron all the time. Well, see, this is no oil, little to no oil, uh, uh, and and it's still frying it. Uh, like I said, hence the air. Got I it. Do, yeah, I, I do steak like in there, 400 degrees, 16 minutes. I never turn it. It comes out perfect. Like literally, I never thought a New York strip would be taste like a restaurant style. How is it frying? That's the part I never quite understood. Yeah, it's I mean, I it, the, the air. The air is or... yeah. The air is, is circulating. Is circulating it. Well, like why it would just, it just it, be air broiling? It yeah, crisp, right. Exactly. It, it, I mean, yeah. I, I knew what tech people do probably like, but air frying sounds cooler. It's uh, like, hey, okay. hey all, you right, all right. I've, you I've don't want to. Yeah, maybe uh, I come from a restaurant fry. family. Says exactly. will it will, will breading work with that? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I would I would say probably consistency wouldn't be as good as if you dipped it in vegetable oil, obviously, because all vegetable do, oil is doing is flash, kind of keeping it together. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it, I, I, there are recipes that people do it, and they, and they love well, it. Well, I, I always use egg in my breading. Yeah, that's what – you put the same um, same things in it, yeah, and, yeah. And, it and it fries huh. it up. Yeah, Because uh, it's, it's, not, it's not the oil that's making it its consistency and taste. When you fry it, that's just you know what's heating it up. But the, yeah, the air is kind of doing the same thing. Uh, I've been nothing but impressed. I, I'm cooking it almost every day. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, just I'd a, love yeah. to give it a try. I always like to try a new method of something that I'm kind of like, eh, I know how to yeah. do it, but eh, I'm also part of an Insta, Instapot group too. <laughs> I want, see, see, that's the thing. I want to try it, but I have so many cooking implements that are like. Oh, here's the George Foreman grill that we no longer use. Right. Oh, here's the blah 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 we no longer. No, exactly. I got rid of my George Foreman because of this stuff. Uh, mm. So it, yeah, it's it so not got the fat. Yeah, it, it does just drips down to the bottom. It's very easy to clean. See, I thought it was. Wa- actually, I find fats. the George Foreman to be a pain in the ass to clean. I I, I don't I don't want to get rid of fat. No, I, I'm I'm. I my, want the oil. I want the fat. Well, see, I've been eating more uh, saturated like fat, fat vegetables, and I'm, and I'm dropping weight because uh, yeah. yeah, I'm also like I'm always trying to gain weight because I'm you know just a well, uh, fat won't make you gain weight. Just eat a whole bunch of carbs; that'll do it. Well, but yeah, it doesn't help either. Okay. But but what I'm saying is, there's no reason for me to take out delicious fat from anything. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, it doesn't help me. Yeah. I want it. I want it to stay. Cause, cause, yeah, consider an air fryer. You know. Well, one day I'll have you all over and we'll do an air fryer party. And I'll, so I'll wait, why what, is an air fryer the same thing as a convection? It's not oven? the same. I don't know. I know there is a difference. Like a convection uh, and, and oven I don't is a know what it is. superheated oven with a fan that blows the air around. Yeah. So this is a fan at the top that's pushing the air down and then it's circulating. So it's getting both sides so, of the so like meat a, or whatever you have. Conv- uh, it is similar. I, I don't. I actually don't know what the exact difference is. Maybe I should go with just a double boiler instead. Now you're Pressure. super low in volume, Roger. 
<laughs> you turned yourself down too far. He was, he was <laughs> contemplating life there. I haven't touched it. All right. What about a pressure? How about the pressure cooker? I'll just go with the pressure I, cooker. I, ha- I have the Instapot. And it's I like want 15... to do the one where the guy with the really bad hair crams all the frozen food and the cuts of meat. And then 30 minutes later, Voila. he has a complete meal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I and it's just cook. like straight out of like the freezer. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, he doesn't like even take it out of the package. Flex. He shoves it with the plastic <laughs> and everything, and it's all done. Oh, speaking of packages, so oh. I was at Whole Foods, as I as I tend to do, the other day, and I realized ah, I'm at a um, dishwasher detergent. I usually like to get like the good stuff, the Cascade mm-hmm. that Whole Foods doesn't have, but I was like, eh, I'm already here. I'll just you know get whatever. So I got one of their little like it's like little pods. That you you know they're like in a plastic thing, but you're not supposed to take the detergent out of the plastic. You're supposed to put it. Oh yeah, that's all I use. Encased in plastic into your dishwasher, and I was like, mm-hmm. it's just cellulose. Yeah. So you you've never used the pods before? Uh, n- n- not the you know like, like it was like the Whole Foods three sixty five brand. Okay. You know, it didn't clean anything. That's how you know it's organic. Yes. I mean, so there are certain job. things where you're like, I just, I want, I want the chemicals. Yeah, I really no, do. No, and I, the dishwasher is one of those places. The best like, way to clean I looked dish. at all my stuff last night. And it was like, it wasn't even sort of clean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a waste. The best dishwasher I, I ever used is the these two right here. It's a lot of scrubbing. No, I, I'm, I, it's weird because I, <laughs> I have yet to find any dishwasher or dishwasher soap that can compare to. Two arms of just scrubbing. Yeah. I, I, well, it's funny. Like, um, I mean, I'm a single person who lives alone, and it's very nice to have a dishwasher. Yeah. But I've also not had one, and I it's like really easy to do your own dishes. It is. It is. You know but what it's, I mean? it's, it's like, so it's nice like to not have it. Yeah. It is. But but it's sort of like this luxury where I'm like it's sort of silly. I could just wash not my like up. one plate, you know, as I use it instead of. Okay. Anyway, I was just don't buy those pods, man. No, I use the Cascade pods, uh, Cascade Platinum or Ultimate, whatever the thing is complete. And it, those are great. Those are like fantastic. What's the one with the red little power dot in the middle? It's like a square soap for uh, I'm trying to remember. I had, we use it on occasion. I use the dish automatic dishwasher like once a month. But it's like it has like two types of soap and then has a red power dot. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Supposedly adds the power to the soap. <laughs> right. Crystallized yeah. technology you know, makes, and, makes and so it know, work I, better. And you can tell because there's a red dot. And a dishwasher actually uses less water than you would in a sink. Really? Well, that really? depends on how you clean it. With it. That's true. That's true. Very true. Well, just all this. I know is that I've got a dishwasher that I just ran full of dirty dishes. And now, I now, do you, do you let yours pile, pile up for like two or three days and then do it, or do you do it every night? Because I tend to try to do it every night. Uh, like, I'll make dishes. Like, I put my air fryer thing in there Wait, every night. Wait, you make dishes, like, on purpose? He, no, he means he, he, he I, I, accumulates yeah, cook, cook dishes dish. that are dirty. I mean, I wouldn't be able to run a dishwasher every night. My gosh. Maybe once, like, a week? I do it because I, I put the air fryer in there, and it takes care of all that grease and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, yeah, um, and, and yeah, it, it sometimes it's it, I stretch it too, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't accumulate enough dishes for yeah. for nightly, but because yeah, I don't either. That, that thing is so big, you this know, it's kind of cool. Oh yeah, I've seen finish this. Super Ball Supercharge. Let's see. Oh, I, the finish fin- Power Ball finish used to be the finishing stuff, not not a cleaner. So that's actually interesting. They're coming out. They came out with soap. If they gave me a Power Ball lottery ticket as well as the detergent, that would be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you won't have to worry about that roof anymore. Well, I'm worried about it now because it's halfway done. I actually, just because, you know, at least some of us will know these people. I, I, I remember as, you know, people ask each other for advice on Facebook and stuff. Colleen Henry at one point was like, dude, why am I washing my dishes and my dishes just aren't being clean after washing them, the dishwasher? What the heck? You know, they're clean, but they're not clean. Yeah. And Molly Wood was like, Rinse aid. I've heard that's that. That's what you need. You but the need Cascade to Complete has it in there. It has a built in. And Let ever since then, that. every time I put my rinse aid in there, I think of that conversation. Let me ask you do you do any pre cleaning of the dishes? Like, say you eat a very like sticky blueberry pie. Not anymore. Would you try to clean. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I don't because I've heard that 
the more stuff that's on there, the better the soap will work. It won't activate if you don't have stuff on the dishes. <laughs> it won't. No, 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 no. I'm dead serious. It it, it needs it needs the stuff to activate. But the great it needs the grease to, to activate. Yeah, it's, a, it's scientific. What? Oh, okay. Because I read it because I read it on the internet. It's scientific. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> I think it honestly. I think it just depends on how good your dishwasher is. Because, I mean, when I was growing up, if we were lucky enough to have a dishwasher in our house, you know, my mom would always be like, you basically clean the entire thing and then you put it in the dishwasher and yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah, that's like, that's yeah, the but I have friends who were like, yeah, like there's food oh, all over everything and they're like, no, nah, it'll come out totally clean. Or I'm like, wow. What I've is this Fish Are Lame video, Tom? Oh, when uh, I mentioned Fish Are Lame earlier, it made me go down a rabbit hole to find this video <laughs> from is that 2000. Josh Lawrence? Actually, I think it's from 2005 or 2003. No, it's before because it was before we moved to G4. This is at Townsend. Yeah. So uh, no, you're right. Probably it's before, be 2004 it's summer or of 2004 for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, that's, that's you all? Wow. Uh, that's not me, no. Uh, but that is Sarah holding the fish are lame sign. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it is. I don't remember what we were protesting now. You, it was for a video that Josh Lawrence was shooting. It was, well, no, it was, no, no, I remember that. But what? Him, why? Yeah, was, we were doing a, a, a comedy why was sketch I, show. Why was I upset about fish? I think this was part of our San Francisco sketch. Oh <laughs> but I don't gosh. remember for sure. Wow. I was also wearing a tent of some kind. <laughs> yeah, hard, hard to know. Like, this is in the 70s? Um, a different time. Have we talked to Josh Lawrence lately? Yeah. Uh, it's been a month or two, but yeah, he, he helps out with Sword and Laser a bunch. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, well, you tell him hello for me. And Clarice. I will. And Clarice. Yes, Clarice is good. <laughs> uh, I always still remember approaching Lane because he was like my web, you know, editor for a lot of my stuff. You know, I'd right, always be right, like, right. Ah, run! <laughs> I didn't do that web stuff I was supposed to do for you. <laughs> Run. So, so <laughs> next time I'm on, we're gonna talk about laundry services and if you should send your laundry out to a, a, a wash and fold or do it yourself. That's I right, do. folks. Next yeah. time on Point to Point, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll let you in on a little secret because I'm Chinese. I have an ancient Chinese secret to share. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so only I can say that. See you next time. All right.